All right, welcome everybody. Uh, Happy New Year uh, to those watching. Uh, we are starting off this new year with Jim Knight, KFM Engineering. Um, we are looking to answer some more questions and add to the plethora of resources that we have on the Higher Lehigh YouTube channel. Um, so with that being said, um, Jim, please take us away and give us a little bit about yourself and about your company. Well, thank you for having me today. It's, I'm very excited to be here. Um, about myself. It's hard to talk about myself. <laughs> I think I'm not sure how many people like talking about themselves. Um, I've been in the, I have a mechanical and a civil engineering degree. I'm sorry, I have a mechanical and a nuclear engineering degree and an MBA. But okay. the only thing I've ever practiced is land development. I have a civil engineering license uh -huh. and I've been doing that in the state of Texas and around the United States for the last 40 years. Uh -huh. um, uh, I have uh, had the great fortune uh, to work on some of the largest, most successful projects uh, built in the state of Texas for the last uh, three decades. Um, I used to be the managing partner of one of the largest privately owned firms in the state. Wow. Uh, we were bought by a worldwide company uh, now mm -hmm. five years ago. Okay. And uh, after working for a large company, realized that uh, I'm more entrepreneurial than that. I like to move faster. I like to think quicker. And um, so we started KFM, me and two of my partners started KFM uh, almost three years ago. Mm -hmm. We have quickly grown into uh, a very substantial organization. Uh, we have a very well-defined client base that does not hire anybody. and We will not hire, uh, accept any client. We have a very discerning set of clients that are usually uh, Fortune 100 companies, wow. high net worth individuals, mm -hmm. uh, and are working on projects from one acre in size to 5,000 acres wow. in size. Wow. <laughs> so primarily focused on civil engineering, mm -hmm. landscape architecture, land planning, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's where we uh, have created our expertise. Great. Great. I mean, uh, it's the sheer amount of size um, that your projects take on uh, is immense. I can't even imagine it. So uh, one thing that uh, did interest me, uh, you know, at Lehigh, we have the Baker Institute. Uh, we have the Lehigh at NASDAQ Center, which really emphasizes the entrepreneurial spirits of Lehigh students, um, both undergrad and grad. Um, would you care to give a few words? You know, you said you really have that entrepreneurial spirit. You know, to any Lehigh students that are really looking to break into and start their own uh, startup company or projects, prototypes, uh, do you have any advice for them? Uh, well, maybe a couple of things. That's always an interesting question. Uh, the first thing I tell you, whatever you do, never do anything for the money. Mm. If you do anything for the money, you're likely going to lose. Mm. You have to do it for the right reason. You have to do it because you have a love and a passion and a fire for it. Mm -hmm. You have to be the absolute best in the world at what you do if you're ever going to make any amount of money. In it. Mm -hmm. The money is an afterthought. Don't do it because you want to get rich. Do it because you love it and become the best at it. And then you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second part is bet on yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get out of school and you're going to go find a company that you believe in their culture. Mm -hmm. And every, every company will say, you know, our employees mean more to us than anything else, blah, blah. But ultimately, you can really figure out, do they live it and breathe it or they just say it? Mm. Find one that you believe in their culture and then find a company that you like their culture and you believe in their leadership, that they do it honestly, morally right and ethically correct. And if you can blend those things together, push all your chips on the table and go all in and then bet on yourself. Sure. Because uh, if I if it was up to me, I would take zero salary mm -hmm. and I would want 100 percent wow. on the upside that I bring to the company. Wow. So that's the entrepreneurial spirit. Are you willing to bet on yourself and roll the dice? Mm. And uh, and I, I've done it for 40 years and we have created a success and a culture. And every one of our senior level people in our company, we hired as interns out of college and then hired them right out of college. And now wow. we're being very successful and we have that uh, spirit bred through our company. Okay. It sounds like uh, it takes, you know, to bet on yourself um, and to do something that you're truly passionate about. It sounds like it, it requires uh, some confidence and some belief in yourself. Yeah. That's interesting. So I have a, uh, 
uh, I have quotes that I give to my uh, staff and I'm going to not distract you, but I'm going to pull one up here. No, of course. And one of them just the other day was that way. And I give them every uh, Tuesday and Thursday. The one the other day was confidence is believing that you're good. Arrogance is believing you're better than anyone else. Hmm. Leaders need to be confident, not arrogant. Hmm. You have to have confidence in yourself. Sure. And it's hard for somebody who's getting right out of engineering school. In engineering school, they teach you about equations of formulas and how to apply them. Sure. In the real world, you have to learn how that really fits, you know, in the business world, because you're not an engineer, you're a business person. Mm. Engineering just happens to be your product. And so how can mm. we take what you've learned there in school and apply it to the real world? We will help you build that confidence. That's part of our job. And mm -hmm. it takes you 12 to 18 months of being out of school, but we will prop you up, pat you on the back, help <laughs> you build that confidence. And you're going to make a yeah. ton of mistakes, but we're sure. going to be with you holding your hand through that process, <laughs> helping you build that confidence incrementally yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to be successful. Yeah, I believe that is, uh, you know, such a, I mean, it's great that you have that, that culture there um, that really cares for the success of your employees and their growth. And you know, also what you said is, you know, engineering is your product. I just think that's really valuable because it's so easy to get, you know, kind of sucked in, you know, and not really think of yourself as a business person, uh, but recognizing that's just as much valuable, you know, uh, um, to the skills. And I'll add to this, uh, engineers, <clears throat> I'm an engineer just like anybody else. And sure. most engineers were very introverted. We, mm -hmm. Most of us are not very outgoing. Uh, some of us are, uh, have very good verbal skills, but a lot of us have a hard time communicating with people that we're not very close to. Mm. And what I try to tell people is, is in, I don't care whether you're an engineer, you're an attorney, you're a doctor, or you sell clothes at Nordstrom's, or you sell uh, coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. You are your product. Mm. It's how mm. you dress. It's how you behave. It's looking people in the eyes. It's shaking mm. their hands. It's being kind. It's being gentle. It's being nice. And help, if you can help everybody else understand that you're here to make their world a better place mm -hmm. and be, you're selling yourself, sure. you're, you're the biggest product that you're trying to sell. Huh. And in our world, our clients don't hire us because we're great engineers. Trust me, we're really good engineers, landscape architects, and land planners, mm -hmm. but we're better people and we care about mm -hmm. more people's success than ours, knowing that we will be successful if they are. Nice. Nice. I, I think that is, uh, you know, an excellent segue into um, you know, really discussing what you look for in a prospective candidate, what skills and competencies you feel make somebody a great fit for your company. Uh, it's real simple. I have one thing. Hmm. There's one thing I want. Uh, and this is a Texas thing. I won't want to. <laughs> okay. I don't care where you come from. I don't mm -hmm. care how wealthy or how poor your parents are. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care uh, what part of the country you grew up in. Mm -hmm. But I care is, do you want to, do you want to be successful? Do you want to work hard? Do you want mm -hmm. to do it with a fire and drive to create a difference in the world? Do you want to make the world a better place? Mm -hmm. And if you want to, I'm going mm -hmm. to give you the opportunity. The key is what you do with that opportunity. We're mm -hmm. going to teach you and show you how to do it. But let me tell you, it's hard work. It's leather on the streets. Mm -hmm. It's not a 40 hour work week. But if you're willing to put the time and effort, I guarantee you, that I can create success. And we have a formula for success. Matter of fact, it's written on a piece of paper, <laughs> literally written on a piece yeah. of paper. And I can mm -hmm. show them how to create success in their life. Okay. But you have to be willing to put the time and effort into mm -hmm. it. It's want to. And do you think that's where the passion fits into it? That drive, you know, to do this is, there's nothing else I'd rather do. This is it for me. Yeah, I think it, 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 when, when young people get out of school, uh, they really don't know what their life wants to be. They have a general idea. Sure. But sure. until you're 30 years old, you don't know where do I want to live, what I want to do with my life, you know, what's my family situation going to be. It mm -hmm. takes a while to kind of figure that out. In the 20s, mm -hmm. we go out and having fun and doing that stuff. <laughs> but uh, you have to, if you, we, as I tell people, we don't ever want anybody who wants a job. If you want a job, I don't want you. Mm. But if you want, mm. if you want a career, mm. if you want an opportunity to change the world to make a difference in this world, we'll give you an opportunity. Well, uh, there, anybody can get a job to get paid to come in forty hours do their job, but sure. we want to create mm. a fire and passion in you that you can't wait to get up the next morning and go back to work because it's exciting and dynamic, <laughs> and that's what it's about. Wow, yeah, that that sounds great, and um, you know that kind of transition as we start to kind of 
we delve a bit deeper into workplace culture there at KFM. So do you mind just kind of, you know, discussing some of the uh, aspects of your workplace culture? Yeah, it's, it's always hard to put a, and I'm looking out at the, over our folks that are out there, and uh, it's hard to put in words because culture is as much a feel. You can't put culture on a piece of paper. Yes. Uh, culture is how you treat people. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's how others treat you. It's, um, and we say we want to have fun. We're going to work hard. There's very few people that will ever work as hard as we do, sure. but we have fun. Mm-hmm. We enjoy each other. We care about each other. If you have a significant other in your life, or you have a family with kids and everything, we care just about much about yeah. your significant other and your children as we do about you. Mm. Uh, if you're not happy at home, you're not going to be happy at work. And if you're mm-hmm. not happy at work, you're not going to be happy at home. So we work hard to balance that. Mm. We have lunch catered in the office three days a week. Wow. So, so everybody doesn't have to feel like they have to go, especially in the COVID world. Yes. They don't have to go out and expose themselves to other situations. We try to protect each other, but it's all about opportunity. Uh, in our company, a little unique thing, and I tell people, I don't care about how many hours you build. In the consulting mm-hmm. world, it's usually about how many hours you build in every week. Mm-hmm. And there's certain companies, some of our competitors are saying, you have to build 39 out of 40 hours, period. That's just the way it works. Mm-hmm. We don't require that type of metric. I don't care how many hours you build. Mm-hmm. Because all of our projects are done on a lump sum basis. Our job is to okay. get the project done on time, be it quality, make the client happy, and the dollars will work themselves out. Sure. Be a great designer and a technician, make the mm-hmm. client happy, and the money will take care of itself. Wow. Don't get yourself wrapped around the axle on financial issues. That's my problem. We'll figure that out. <laughs> and I'll teach, you how, I'll teach yeah. them how to do it over time so they understand, so they start building that repertoire of how to do it. But the other thing is we care about each other. We have company picnics. We have Christmas mm-hmm. parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, we uh, have family events. Uh, we cater mm-hmm. lunches. We have happy hours. Mm-hmm. We do those things. But those are just the side little things as opposed to dealing with somebody in a human manner to make them feel like they're cared about the wanted. Mm-hmm. And then we extend it to the next level. Mm-hmm. Most companies can't do this. Our company structure is built. We have our leadership transition built in for the next 30 years. Wow. Wow. So if something happens to me or if I retire, we everybody knows how it's going to go. And uh-huh. they actually know how, what their opportunity is to get involved in that and be wow. part of that, too. So we're very open and honest about building their career, uh, their skill mm-hmm. sets, so they can be successful long term. Mm-hmm. Do you offer any leadership trainings? Uh, yes, workshops, we do. Et cetera. Yes, we do. Matter of fact, uh, mm-hmm. all of our senior people, once mm-hmm. they get to a certain level, we send them to the Bell Leadership Institute, which is wow. uh, in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Wow. I consider them the premier leadership uh, mm-hmm. institute in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, they are fantastic. And all of our leaders have gone through that program. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, that's great. And um, does the would the company finance that part of it or how does that work for the, oh, we, we pay hundred percent of it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that just keeps in line again with the investment into the employee. Well, it's in, so here, the way I look at it, you know, mm-hmm. we could do this. Could we structure ourselves to where we're making more money? I'm taking more money home, whatever. Sure. We could do that. Mm-hmm. But why, what my job is to invest in the people that work with us that are our teammates. When I was young, people mm-hmm. took me aside and they showed me how to do it. They invested in me. Mm-hmm. And my job now is to pay it forward, is to make mm-hmm. sure that the people that come back, that I have the ability to touch and influence over the rest of my career, I can do that to help their lives get better. Mm-hmm. And then there's an obligation. They have the absolute 100% obligation when their opportunity comes to pay it forward to the next generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's great. And uh, because folks really remember, the mentors in their lives and the wisdom, you know, so they could pass them on. Yeah. And it's in the, in the sad part is I, I wish every company would do the same thing and, and sure. pay it forward and help. Their, uh, people will say that, but when you go to work, mm-hmm. they'll stick you in a corner and they never talk to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You have to walk mm-hmm. everybody. We all live through daily stresses that nobody else knows about. Sure. Everybody always thinks that everybody else has got a perfect life and they don't. <laughs> If you understood and put yourself in the shoes that everybody walks in, you realize we're all humans. We're here to mm-hmm. help each other. 
Sure. Now, we're going to be successful. And I can promise you, nobody's going to beat us at what we do. I have mm-hmm. never failed in our business. Mm-hmm. We're not going to fail because we're willing to outwork everybody else. We're going to teach everybody how to be successful yeah. so they can guarantee mm-hmm. their, their personal and their family uh, mm-hmm. and their business careers as their life goes on. Great. Yeah. And that, that kind of uh, dovetails into the next question. Uh, you know, diversity has been such a growing topic. And, you know, at Lehigh at our office, we've been focusing on ways to really improve diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, you know, diversity adds to the perspectives and the uh, just work output uh, to any company. So how would you say, um, you know, your company really practices that? And if you can give an example. Well, I can give you a number of examples because I can look at them. Uh, this, is one that's, <laughs> this is actually near and dear to my heart. Mm-hmm. In our prior company, I was adamant and I stood up in front of our boards of directors, which I was part of. Mm-hmm. And I said, we're going to have a female partner. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a partner of color. Mm-hmm. We need to integrate and look like society. Now, we were a much bigger organization. And sure. that was a harder thing to drive in a bigger organization. But in our company today, uh, we have probably 30, I'm guessing here, 30% yeah. of our engineers are ladies. Wow. Uh, we probably have another 30% or of uh, uh, cultural diversification. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have folks from India. We have people from China. We have mm-hmm. people from Mexico, mm-hmm. uh, people from the United States. Uh, oh. And my deal is I don't care where you come from. Yep. If you're willing to work hard, but I want our workforce to look like society. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want us to look like, because if we look like the world and the world looks at us and they see us looking similar, that helps everybody get better. Sure. Uh, but now we don't go out of the way. We, you know, we treat every candidate the same. They clearly have to present themselves. They have to be qualified and they have to mm-hmm. be willing to work hard. Mm-hmm. But uh, we've done a, a nice job of assembling a team that is tremendously talented mm-hmm. and cares about each other, regardless of cultural backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, to have that diversification. So we're pretty excited. Mm-hmm. About that. That's great. That's great, Jim. Thank you for sharing that. Um, our next question is, again, keeping in line uh, with culture. Um, you know, how is employee feedback collected and used to further your company's vision? That's a good one. We, uh, we have a company-wide staff meeting the first Monday of every month. Wow. Okay. And everybody, you know, we have a complete open dialogue. There's only mm-hmm. one com- There's only one piece of information we will not share with our staff. That's mm-hmm. individual salaries okay. because that is their business. That's nobody else's business. How much sure. money they make. Mm-hmm. But anybody can ask any question at any time. You can ask us what our strategic plan is. When are we going to hire? What kind of clients we're going after? What type of projects? How much money you making? How much money are we losing? How much do our benefits cost? It's a complete transparency. Yeah. Because I tell people. Unlike somebody who's running for uh, elected office who speaks transparency and then live it, mm-hmm. we speak it and live it and breathe it. Mm-hmm. We want mm-hmm. the more people know about the company that they dedicate a big chunk of their life to, the better they're going to be mm-hmm. at what they do. And so that's very, very important to us. But the other thing we do is we have our staff. And this is one of the things that's really good in the markets we're in, which is Austin and, uh, and the Dallas market. Sure. is uh, we have our employees uh, go for the best places to work. So they mm-hmm. have to vote on our, and there's a lot of questions. There's some trick ones in there too. <laughs> they really can't, they just can't go through there and check boxes and turn it in. Mm-hmm. And if you miss, if one person turns in a negative comment, mm-hmm. you don't make the finals. Wow. It's that fine tune. It's a very competitive deal. Yeah. And for every year since we've been in business, we've finished in the top two. Wow. Of best places to work and it's completely the partners don't benefit we don't we don't participate in that we can't answer it it all comes mm-hmm. from the staff they tell us wow. what we can do better what kind of benefits would be better and how we can make this place a better work uh, environment so sure. we allow them to have full control of it wow that's that's great and i'm happy to hear that there's such an emphasis on that you know collection and utilization of you know that feedback process um <clears throat> and that there's multiple avenues for which they can pursue that. Um, as we wind down this interview, um, you know, I have two brief questions, just some, you know, key takeaways uh, that can really sum up, um, you know, any advice or more pearls of wisdom because you have been full of them this, 
you know, during this interview. Um, you know, what are some ways interested students uh, can connect with your company or any representatives, recruiters? Well, very easily. We, they can find me through our website. Our mm -hmm. cell phone numbers and our emails are on our website. Mm -hmm. The website will give you uh, very brief information about what we do as a company. Mm -hmm. uh, we could put a tremendous amount of data on a website, but we are so our projects are so confidential, we don't uh, yeah. let a lot of that out. But you can mm -hmm. get a pretty good grasp of what we do. And you anybody can reach out to me by email or phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually good at getting back with everybody. That's great. And what are what's the most uh, important piece of advice or pieces uh, for graduating students? Uh, stay in school. It's easier <laughs> in school than it is out in the real world. Uh, uh, no, I say that in jest. Uh, find what you do. Mm -hmm regardless of what part of the country you're from. And I have this same challenge right now. I have a son who's a uh, school up Northeast, mm -hmm. I have a daughter in school up Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, in the land, civil engineering land development world, you have to go where there's jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to go where there's, and jobs are driven by economic growth. Mm -hmm. Find the part of the country that you want to live in. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll find a job, but mm -hmm. to look at the areas where there's a uh, good long-term economic growth and you'll find the best opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're going to, in Lehigh University, you're going to one of the top schools in the entire uh, country. You're going to get a job. Find the place you want to live mm -hmm. and then, uh, then and go all in with it. But whatever you do, remember, you're going to be working every day for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Find something you love. Find mm -hmm. somebody that you want, that believes in you as much as you believe in them and love it and if you find a job that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate, uh, you know, you sharing your time with us, uh, you know, and really delivering on these questions. I, you know, is I will let you know when the next episode is out. But to everybody watching, you know, thank you. Feel free to reach out to Jim and uh, we'll see you later. Yes, sir. Thank you.